the M1 Garand served American and Allied forces in two major wars and numerous smaller conflicts. Virtually every M1 Garand carried by an American soldier, whether in combat or training, had to be repaired or refurbished with new parts during its service life. During World War II, the M1 Garand rifle was manufactured by the Springfield National Armory and by the Winchester Arms Company. A total of 298 different changes to the rifle's 57 parts were made during its production life. To make matters even more confusing, 218 different markings were applied to the rifle and its parts, the specific number depending on its period of manufacture. So how do you know that any M1 Garand is original is manufactured and used by an American soldier? Each M1 Garand rifle was marked with a unique serial number. Each rifle part was also marked with a unique code, called a drawing number. Drawing numbers changed as parts were changed. You can compare a part's drawing number against the rifle's serial number to see when it was made. If a drawing number and serial number do not coincide, you then know that the part was changed. Why would you want to know? Are all the parts correct? Are any of the parts reproductions? Are the markings on the stock correct? Was a specific part used in a different serial number range? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then the historical and monetary value of your rifle is decreased. The M1 Garand book, now in its sixth updated edition, provides all the information you need to determine not only the authenticity of an M1 Garand, but that each and every part is correct for its period of manufacture. During World War II, all M1 Garand stocks were made from American black walnut. Each original stock will show three distinct markings. First, the inspection cartouche containing the initials of the commanding officer of the Springfield Armory or the Ordnance District in which the rifle was manufactured. Secondly, the Ordnance Department's acceptance cartouche. And third, the firing proof. When the finished rifle was fired for proof, it was stamped with the initial P inside a circle. This mark, or cartouche, is found on the front of the pistol grip. If the P proof is not enclosed in a circle, then the stock is a replacement. When the M1 Garand passed final inspection by the Ordnance Department, it was marked with the initials of the commanding officer of the Springfield Armory. This mark, also called a cartouche, was stamped on the left side of the stock below and slightly behind the rear sight. Four different inspection cartouches will be found on M1 Garands manufactured at the Springfield Armory after the American entry into World War II in December 1941, plus one in the years before. The exact initials depend on the period of manufacture as determined by the rifle serial number. Three different inspection cartouches were used on M1 Garands manufactured by Winchester Arms after December 1941, and one in the months before. Again, the set of initials will depend on the period in which the rifle was manufactured, as you can determine by the rifle serial number. When the M1 Garand was approved and accepted by the Army, it was marked with a third cartouche consisting of cross cannons behind a circular belt and below a flaming bomb. The cross cannon cartouche, as it is generally known to collectors, was stamped to the right of the inspector's cartouche on the left side of the stock. Two sizes of the cross cannon cartouche were used. The first was 0.72 inches in diameter and applied by the Springfield Armory to March 1942. The second was 0.44 inches in diameter and applied at Springfield until September-October 1953. Winchester always used the smaller 0.44 inch diameter cartouche on their entire M1 Garand production. The many other differences that allow you to differentiate between Springfield Armory, Winchester, and reproduction M1 Garand stocks are too extensive to be described here, but are explained in great detail in the M1 Garand 1936 to 1957 book. In October 1953, 
the Ordnance Department stopped using the familiar initials in a box cartouche and switched to a new Department of Defense cartouche which showed an eagle, wings outspread while clutching three arrows, under three stars in a box. No M1 Garand manufactured before late 1953 will show the Defense Department cartouche unless it has been restocked after it left government service. If an M1 Garand stock has two or more initials stamped into the left side of the buttstock, such as AA for Augusta Arsenal, for example, the rifle has gone through a refurbishment process at one of the Ordnance Department arsenals or at the Springfield Armory. Almost all M1 Garands that served overseas during World War II or Korea went through this process, with parts being replaced if worn or obsolete. The M1 Garand 1936-57 book contains a complete listing of the initials and their arsenals. From the late 1950s on, surplus M1 Garand stocks were sold by the Department of Defense to private and commercial purchasers. Many were new stocks without markings. If an M1 Garand stock does not show any proof marks, including the P firing proof, then it is a stock that was replaced after the rifle left service. Commercial manufacturers are also making and selling new M1 Garand stocks made of walnut that are difficult to tell from the originals. They will not show any Ordnance Department markings unless they have been added by an unscrupulous person. For nearly 30 years, counterfeit Ordnance Department cartouches, Springfield, Winchester, Department of Defense, inspector stamps, P-proof marks, and Ordnance Department acceptance stamps have been offered for sale. These are being used to make replacement and new commercial stocks appear to be original World War II or post-war Garand stocks. The sizes of these fake cartouches are incorrect, and if you know what to look for, you will not be misled into paying an original price for an M1 Garand with a fake stock. The difference in value between a World War II M1 Garand with an original stock and one with a fake stock can be as much as 60% or more. The differences and how to spot the fake markings are described in great detail in the M1 Garand 1936-1957. A total of six different butt plates were manufactured for and applied to the M1 Garand at different times in the production runs by the two wartime manufacturers, Springfield Armory and Winchester, and by International Harvester and Harrington and Richardson, who manufactured M1 Garands between 1953 and 1956. Springfield Armory manufactured two types, the first without the hinge cap over the opening for the cleaning kit and the second with the opening and cap for the cleaning kit. Winchester early butt plates were made without the opening and cap for the cleaning kit, but the vast majority were made with both the opening and cap, plus a distinct border around the checkering. Many late, but not all, Winchester butt plates are marked 2S on the inside. Butt plates used on post-war International Harvester and Harrington and Richardson M1 Garands can be differentiated by their style of checkering. Details can be found in the M1 Garand 1936-1957 book. M1 Garand butt plates were also manufactured by Beretta and Brita for use on Italian M1 Garands, both repaired U.S. military aid rifles and new Beretta and Brita M1 production. As many of these are also available on the surplus market, collectors should be careful. Italian manufactured butt plates are marked on the inside PB or BMP. These are just a few of the important points to use in identifying and authenticating an original World War II, Korean War, or later M1 Garand through examination of the stock and butt plate. Subsequent videos will cover the barrel and bolt and identifying features of post-war M1 Garands. Also, review how to identify an original M1 Garand Part 1 on the same YouTube channel. For additional and detailed information 
on World War II and post-war M1 Garands. Obtain a copy of the M1 Garand 1936 to 1957 by Joe Poyer and Craig Reich, now in its 6th edition from North Cape Publications Incorporated or Amazon.com. The price is $22.95.